How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were on too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas hating the Who's. Alphabetically. Oddbarkian, Abakanesia Who, I HATE YOU! Harabe Benshin Who, I hate you. Hate, 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 double hate, loathe entirely. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now. Hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings. He snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here! Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew. All the Who girls and Who boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, 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 noise. And that's the one thing the Grinch hated. Oh, the noise, 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 noise! <clears throat> Hate the noise. And then the Who's, young and old, would sit down for a feast. And they'd feast, feast, feast. And they'll feast, 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 feast! <gasps> they'll eat the Who pudding. And their rare Who roast beast! It's something I cannot stand in the least! <gasps> oh no! I'm speaking in rhymes! <laughs> Blast you, Who's! And then they'll do something he liked least of all. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's started singing. They'd sing and sing and sing and sing! And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Uh, I mean, in what way? Then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. Uh. He made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat, and he chuckled and clucked. <laughs> Why, with this coat and this hat, I'll look just like Saint Nick. Ho, ho, ho! You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus and as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black beard. You're a monster, Mr. Grinch, yes you are. Your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spatters, you got galligan as a lobe, Mr. Grinch. Well, I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. All I need is a rain. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said. If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one. 
instead. My God, a cat? That's not in the script. Then he loaded up some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Or the cat. Then the Grinch said, Yah! And the sleigh started down towards the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All the windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, Come on, Max! This is our first stop. The old Grinchy Claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue. Ah, uh, a little more stealth, please. With a little more stockings, all long in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates and drums, trekker boards, tricycles, popcorn and plums. And then he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's beast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box quick as a flash. Why, the Grinch even took their last can of Who Ash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, Grinch the Grinch, I stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and saw a small Who, little Cindy Lou Who was no more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter, who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot? The fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop. <laughs> I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou went to bed with a cup, he went to the chimney, and he stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but some hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for other Who mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the Who's still abed, all the Who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Ooh, ooh, to the Who's. He was grinchously humming. That's right. I better read this one verbatim. <clears throat> They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. The mouse will hang open for a minute or two, and the Who's down in Whoville will cry boo-hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow, one or another, it came. 
just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons! It came without tags! It came without packages, boxes, or bags! And he puzzled three hours till his puzzle was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. <laughs> what is happening to me? Himself, the Grinch. 